glad to be back here worshiping and praising with you together. So we just all like to stand wherever you are in your jammies. Just get up and worship the Lord because it's Sunday, it's the Lord's day. Amen. If we were in church, we'd be doing the same, so why not do it at home? Okay? So we're going to start with I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah.
cuore de gente, le branco lo come de in whom we put our trust. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Our life is in your hands. Our life is in your hands. Our life is in your hands. Oh, we thank you for this opportunity that we've had to worship you. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Isn't it good to worship the Lord? Isn't it good? Isn't it good, church? Isn't it good, Kingdom Harvest, to worship him? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise you, Lord. You know, we're so longing to be together, worshiping together, worshiping together. But you know what? From your living room, as you enter in those times of worship, we're together. Hallelujah. We're together because there's no distance in the spirit. We love you, church. Well, let's turn to Psalm um, chapter 115. And this uh, few verses is so familiar to us. I wanted to bring it to you and remind you of it today. So we'll start Psalm 115 and verse 12. It says, the Lord has been mindful of us. Isn't that awesome that God is mindful of us? God is mindful of me. He's mindful of you. He's mindful in your situation. He's mindful of what's concerning you, of what you've committed to him. He is mindful of you today. He is. And it says, he will bless us. He'll bless you. He'll bless the house of Israel and he'll bless the house of Aaron. Talking of the priesthood there. You know, you could substitute when you read this. He'll bless the house of Brian and Karen. Put your own name in there. Verse 13. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great both young and old, if you if you look into the Hebrew there, he will bless everyone. And verse 14, which we love, may the Lord give you increase more and more, you and your children. And uh, if you read this from the King James Version, it says, the Lord shall give you increase more and more, you and your children. What a promise. I lift up that promise to the church reg or to the Lord regularly. He's given us increase more and more and more. Church, trust in the Lord. Trust in Him. Keep looking to Him. Hallelujah. Keep looking to His Word. Be encouraged in His Word. He's doing great things. He's doing great things in the midst. When I'm phoning and hearing testimonies from you, I'm hearing great reports. Hallelujah. God has so much in store for us. So much in store for this church. Keep trusting. Keep looking to him. Hallelujah. Let's pray. I want to pray for you today. God, I thank you. And I, and I pray, Father God, for the church today. Father, I thank you, Lord, that as they give today or as they give through the week, I thank you, Father, for your blessing upon them, Lord, pushed down, shaken together and overflowing, men given onto their bosom. I thank you, Father, for a great increase coming upon them and their children, Lord God. Everyone, both young and old, both small and great, 
Father God, everyone blessed. I thank you, you're such a good father. And Lord, your word says that every good gift comes from you. I thank you, you're the giver of good gifts. And we trust you, Lord God, with our lives. We trust you today, Father, with everything that we've committed to you. And we're standing in the promises of your word. And they are yes and amen to us. So we're trusting you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Church. You're blessed. Hallelujah. We'll see you soon. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Good to be with you again. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you been enjoying the word of God? Praise God. At least that's one thing we can enjoy. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, today we're going to look at the parable of the wheat and the tares. The wheat and the tares. You know, Jesus explained to us the hour in which we're living, you know, by these parables. And there's 12 kingdom parables in Matthew, the book of Matthew, and you know, that was how Jesus was describing the age that we're living in, the church age, praise God. You know, in 1 Thessalonians 5, the apostle Paul said, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you concerning the times and the seasons, for you yourselves know. And he said, you know, I explained it to you. I told you these things when I was with you, praise God. And the things which Paul was telling the Thessalonican church you know, uh, are things which are available to us today, praise God. You know, in his writings, in his word, Jesus himself described the days in which we are living. And again, uh, he told us these 12 wonderful kingdom parables, which in our Bible school, in Kingdom Harvest Bible School, um, praise God, David Cullen is gonna be sharing a whole course on the kingdom parables, and you're gonna absolutely love it. Praise the Lord. So this was the revealing of the mystery of the church age because the Bible says that the church age was hidden. It was hidden. It was hidden in the heart of God, in the mind of God, and it was only revealed at the time when Jesus uh, was walking the earth. He hinted at it in Matthew 16 when he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. And he kept it in his heart until the resurrection when he expounded unto his disciples then, after his resurrection, all things concerning the kingdom of God for 40 days, praise God. And then they understood what all these parables meant, praise God, because the Bible says if Satan had known what was going on, he wouldn't have crucified the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord set him up. Amen. So Jesus and, and God the Father willed this church age, praise God, to absolutely defy and absolutely trick and trap the enemy so that he wouldn't know that God was sowing something in the earth that the devil would never be able to destroy. Hallelujah. That he'd never be able to overcome or challenge. Hallelujah. And that's the church today. Praise God. Absolutely wonderful. So let's look at this parable. Praise God, this parable in Matthew chapter 13. And in verse 24, it says this, and another parable he put forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Now we know from the preceding parable, the very first parable that Jesus gave them on the kingdom, it was the parable that the sower sows the word. We know that the the seed that the Son of Man was sowing was the Word of God. And Jesus said that was the key to all parables. You know, understanding that God sows the seed into our hearts and those who have a good heart and those who are receptive and those who receive the Word and, and act on it and bear fruit with it. He said those are the, the children of God that, that bring forth fruit, you know, 30, 60, 100 fold. So we know here what the seed is. It's the Word of God. So it says here again that that the uh, good man went unto his field. He sowed good seed in his field. Verse 25, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Now, it says, but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared also the tares. Now, tares are deceptive. They're absolutely deceptive. They they sneak in, you know, they're they're, in your field, you don't even realize it until they're growing up together because they look so much like wheat. And you know, you see a lot of things in the earth today that you know are growing up and there's a deception behind them. And the Lord said the kingdom of God would be this way. 
You know, wheat uh, is, is full. It's got those rich and wonderful kernels, you know, that we all enjoy in our breakfast cereals and porridge and everything else, you know, and it's absolutely wonderful. And it, it is the symbolism of the harvest, you know, the harvest that God, that Jesus went to the cross for. The Bible says that it is his harvest, that he has purchased it with his blood. Hallelujah. You know, it's rich, it's wonderful. It comes to full fruit, praise God. But tares are completely different. They, they they look like wheat, they look like it, but they don't have any fruit. There's, there's no rich kernels that you can enjoy. They're absolutely skint, okay? It's like, it's like wheat that's not wheat. It looks like wheat, but it's not wheat. And uh, so, you know, you don't see that until the, the wheat and the tares grow up together, until they're mature, until they're mature. And that's what happened here in the parable. It says, when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, among the, uh, then also appeared the tares. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? From whence hath it these tares? Okay, now they see the tares. Everybody sees the tares. You know, uh, you look around you right now, there's some tares appearing. <laughs> some tares appearing. Now, what do you do when there's tares in the harvest of the earth and the world, you know, that, that should just be the wheat. And the Lord said, okay, the husbandmen of the field said unto them, the enemy has done this, okay? Not the work of God, the enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, will you then that we go and root up, you know, tear up these, uh, gather these tears up? And he said unto them, no, he says, lest while you gather the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Now that's a word to the body of Christ today, okay? That we, we don't just go chasing after the tares and fussing about the tares, you know, and trying to tear up the tares. <laughs> Praise God. The, the Lord, the master of this field and of the harvest had some great wisdom here. He said, let the both grow together. Verse 30, let the growth both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather you together first the tares and bind them into bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barns. <laughs> Hallelujah. Gather the wheat, praise God, the church, the rich harvest uh, that Christ is one, praise God. You know, that those ones who have responded to the the Lord, they've yielded to him. They've received what he has done for them and received him as savior. Praise God, gather them into my barns. I mean, that reminds me of John chapter 14 where Jesus said, if I go away, I will go away and I will prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. Praise the Lord. That's what the Lord was saying, you know, to all of us. He said, I'm going away, but I'm coming again, and I'm gonna receive you to myself, and I have prepared a place for you. Praise God, the barns, only these aren't barns, they're mansions, hallelujah. There's, there's a wonderful place in glory for the church, the body of Christ, amen? Praise God. So that was wonderful, and he told some other parables there, but later it says that they came to him and asked, uh, verse 36, the. The disciples came and asked him, declare unto us the parables of the tares of the field. Okay, they said, look, we understand what the wheat is. What are those tares? Um, and he said unto them, he that sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Now, this is perfectly clear. Now, Jesus interpreted himself, so we don't have to. Praise God, it's written right there for us. The field is the world. The sower is the son of man, Jesus. Praise God. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. So those children that received the word of God, they grew up in that field. They were the rich, rich and wonderful harvest. Praise God, the children of the kingdom of God. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Now, both growing together in the field, both growing up, and the children of the wicked one, what does that mean? You know, the Bible says that we're all in darkness until we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. The scripture says, 
He's the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except through him. Jesus said, he that believes on me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation. You know, praise God, the Lord delivers us. And the Bible says, as many as received him, to them he gave power to be the children of God. So you can actually move from being a tear to a, a, a piece of wheat. Hallelujah. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. So, um, and then he said that uh, the enemy that sowed the tares was the devil. He was the devil. And the harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. Okay, the harvest is the end of the world. Right now, church, as you look around us, right now we're in this season where the tares are appearing. Hey, look, there's tares, there's more tares. But the wheat also, amen, is appearing, praise God. The harvest, the great harvest of God that we're thanking him for, the, the glorious revival, amen. Jesus' name being lifted up, proclaimed in all the earth, the good news of the gospel to every part of God's creation, amen. Every Every nation as a witness and the Bible says then the end will come so that harvest is growing up praise God but at the end of it at the very very end of this world of this age you know the the end of the age it says the Son of Man shall send forth his angels they shall, shall gather out of his kingdom all things whose kingdom Jesus kingdom all this belongs to him amen he is the creator praise God he's the Son of Man that sowed the good seed in the field in the first place hallelujah this is his work and his field and his harvest hallelujah um, so it says that he sent forth his angels to gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. You know, I've often been accused of, of not teaching on judgment. You know, we're always teaching on a good life. We're teaching on the, the blessing of God for the believers. And that's right because God said in his word in Jeremiah 23 that he would set pastors in the church you know, to teach his people and feed his people so that they wouldn't lack and they wouldn't fear, you know, and uh, they wouldn't be confused in any way. And so we've been doing that. But I'll tell you what, church, there's another side of the word of God that that is there so plainly in black and white, you know, that for those who don't receive the gospel, who don't receive Jesus, who don't accept the salvation plan of God, you know, the bridge between God and man, which is Jesus himself. He is the bridge. He's the way. He's the truth, the life. He's the doorway, you know, for us to enter into the kingdom of God and the family of God. You know, Jesus said, you have to be born again or you you can't even perceive the kingdom and you can't even enter it you know Jesus is that wonderful one but for the for the people that don't receive him there is a judgment there is a reckoning there's a reckoning when people just say no I I don't want God I, I refuse to accept God you know I, I I don't want anything to do with him well why not why not why not God is love <laughs> He is love and he's reaching out. But for those who reject the love, there is no other place to go. And it says here that those things which offend and those things uh, which do iniquity, you know, they, they just can't be bound by God's rules. They're just going to do whatever they want. You know, when you think about society today and you think about uh, the civilization that we live in, the only thing that keeps it civil is when people obey the rules. When, when they are, allow themselves to be governed, you know, in, in a good way by good government, praise God. But uh, when people say, you know, I'm not going to be bound by any rules. I'm going to do what I want to. I'm going to drive whatever speed I want to on the motorway. You know, I'm going to harm people and hurt people anytime I want to. Uh, and I'll do it in any fashion I want to. And I'll steal and I'll rob and I won't respect anybody, you know, and I'll rebel. I mean, here in society, we, we do exactly the same thing. Those people... The law enforcement comes they get locked up okay they, they can't live peaceably with everybody else and uh, they get incarcerated is, is one of the words that are used uh, well I'll tell you God's kingdom isn't any different isn't any different and the Lord is reaching out but here is what happens when people refuse that reaching out that outstretched arm it says then, it says, they shall be cast into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then, though, it says the righteous, what happens to the wheat? Then the righteous shall shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, 
let him hear. Now, when we were talking on the book of Revelation and teaching the book of Revelation over the last two weeks, uh, when we, we did that, we saw the, the incredible judgments that are coming upon the earth in the not very distant future. Not very distant. I mean, literally, you know, the greatest sign before Jesus coming, Jesus said it in Matthew 25, or Matthew 24, uh, he said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all nations. And he said, then the end shall come. So no matter what the signs are around us, the greatest sign is that this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all nations. And saints, this is the most amazing thing that's happening right now. We're literally closing in on that objective, literally closing in on that goal, completing the Great Commission as it's called. You know, um, you may have heard of the Global Church Network, a, a global network of churches over 665,000 strong, I hear now growing by leaps and bounds all the time. And one of the, the main aims and the commitment uh, of that gathering of churches, you know, in spirit and in truth, just, just willing uh, pastors, church leaders, uh, congregations all over the world, one of the main objectives is to finish the Great Commission by 2030. Now, we've got a lot to do, but I'm telling you, with focused effort, it's being done. Hallelujah, it's being done. We're a part of that. You're a part of that. Praise God. So many of you. And uh, Hallelujah. You know, th this is uh, how close we are, praise the Lord, to, to entering the kingdom of God, you know, and, and just uh, getting out of here. Hallelujah. But uh, the, the main aim, what I was looking for there, the main aim of that Global Church Network is to finish by 2030. To finish by 2030. That's the aim. To reach every tribe and unreached people group. Praise God. They're, they have expedited and speeded up, you know, the translation of the Bible into the different languages of different people groups. They have all the stats. They, they know who is reached, who isn't reached. You know, it's being done as we speak. Praise God. You know, the gospel is going out over the airwaves all all over the earth, even uh, even multiplied <laughs> exponentially by this so-called lockdown. Hallelujah! It's forced churches to go online, and it literally fulfills the scripture where the Lord said, "The knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea." Talk about that in the last days. And uh, what better way to fulfill that scripture than when you think of it? The only way to actually cover the earth as the waters cover the sea is through electricity electromagnetic waves. They literally fulfill that scripture when electromagnetic, electromagnetic waves, which are carrying the gospel uh, to all nations and peoples, are going out all across the world, all at the same time, praise God, covering the earth. Amen. I tell you, God's prophecies are so wonderful. You know, they just are always exponentially more true. As we enter the end, there's more earthquakes. You know, there, there's more nations rising at stage or there's, there's more uh, of the gospel being preached. It's wonderful. Hallelujah. But this is how, how close we are. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me just pull up another bit of this here. Hallelujah. So when we look at, you know, what, what we saw there in the, the book of Revelation, uh, once again, you know, the, the serious, serious side of this, uh, in Revelation chapter 18 and Revelation chapter 19, you know, we, we saw how that, that parable in Matthew said that the tares will be gathered up and, and burned. You know, and you see in Revelation 18 how Babylon, Babylon, the city, uh, that, that system of Babylon and everything that goes with it. The Bible says its judgment came in one hour. It says that the smoke of it, the burning of it, the smoke of it rose up forever and ever. You know, and... Uh, uh, Revelation chapter 19, Jesus' return when, when the tares gather together uh, at Armageddon for that great so-called battle, uh, they were immediately, instantly slain. And, and the Bible says that the, the beast and the false prophet, they were immediately taken and thrown into a lake of fire. And that's, that's that burning that we're, we're talking about here. You know, there's another parable in the, the scripture right after that parable where we read about the wheat and the tares and it's called the dragnet, you know, and it's saying that the kingdom of God is like a, a great net that was cast forth and pulled in fish of all kinds. You know, Jesus said, I'll make you fishers of men. And he's saying this, 
This time of the church age will be like that, that everyone will be fishing for men and they'll be evangelizing and going forth. And it says the net pulled in all manner of fish. But in that same net were fish that were serious, there were fish that were genuine, there were fish that were authentically converted, that loved the Lord, that surrendered everything, and uh, that were, were marketable and good. And then, I'm talking about the fish being marketable, uh, but uh, then it says that there were bad fish as well. There were bad fish. They, they, they weren't useful to the fishers or to the one who owned the fishing company, hallelujah. There was fish that, that were useless. They, they weren't what they were supposed to be and they were uh, separated and thrown away. And so this is it. There's gonna be a great, great separating church, a great separating in this time. We are getting closer and closer, closer and closer to the end. The Lord is separating right now, praise God. He, this is the last call in that sense. You know, he's, he's taking last orders. You know, you talk about last call and all this, for, you know, wild metaphor here, but, um, <laughs> praise God, but it's like this is the last moment in which people have the opportunity to respond to the Lord Jesus, to respond to him, hallelujah. So we've got to do that. We've got to help others, you know, around the world, help others uh, to receive Christ. We've got to reach out, praise God. We are the wheat, amen? And it doesn't matter what the tares are doing. It doesn't matter what's going on out there in the world. There is a harvest to continue to reap, hallelujah. There is a harvest uh, to bring in. This is the time. This is God's time. It, it's the church's time. It's the greatest time in history for the winning of souls to Christ, praise God. Sharing of the gospel right across the world, amen. Every country, every nation, every people, every tribe, every group, praise God. This is that time. And I just, I wanna encourage you in the greatest way, have the greatest focus, have the greatest boldness, have the greatest strength. You know, put on the armor of God, have the greatest strength. Uh, that the Lord himself gives, amen, to, to go out and share Christ with others, praise God. And uh, we can, we can share Christ anywhere and everywhere that we are. That's what God wants, that's what he's looking for. You know, just that we're, we're willing, we're available, we're open and taking advantages of the opportunities that are all around us. Can you do that today, church? Can you take advantage of those opportunities, amen? We love you and, and I just want you to know once again that all the promises of God in Christ Jesus are still yes and amen. You know, you yourself, the Lord himself said he would look after you. He said that he would uphold you. He said that he would strengthen you and be with you. He said that he would make a way for you, praise God. He said that he would bless you. He said that he would protect you, praise God. These are, are strange times, praise God. But the Lord himself is your protector, amen. He's the one, praise God, that, that makes the way before us. You know, I always dreamed of just going on to the mission field. Once I knew I was called, I thought, you know, great, I can go anywhere. I can, I can go to Afghanistan, I can go to Russia, I can go to, to Asia, the Middle East, I can go to China, I can go to Indonesia, praise God. You know, and in all of those places, there would be dangers, dangers of different kinds and different sorts, depending on what part of the world you're in. Praise God, but he put me here in Ireland, hallelujah. Where in Northern Ireland, <laughs> United Kingdom, where there's like, it doesn't seem hardly any dangers. <laughs> Not compared to other parts of the world, praise God, where you get rattlesnakes and you get poisonous spiders and you get diseases and you get Ebola and you get, you know, all, or, or you get Muslim extremists trying to kill you. Um, so bit here, not so much though, definitely more in other nations. <laughs> so, but I always thought and always, always Praise God, the Lord is the one who protects me, amen. He's the one that protects you. He's the one that protects you, praise God. And I could just go on and on there. You know, I know people that went in and out of the Iron Curtain uh, before it was lifted, you know, bringing Bibles, preaching the gospel to the underground church, amen. They were protected, hallelujah. For the people going into Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan, you know, in the boots of cars <laughs> to go preach. Hallelujah. Saints, amen. We are the triumphant church. Amen. And we're going to be talking more about that in the weeks ahead. 
Praise God. I've said something about the tares here. So if you see tares, don't worry about it. The Lord says well, you're all going to grow up together. <laughs> the church is growing. Amen. The church is victorious. Praise God until we leave this place. Amen. And then we go to be with Christ forever. So I'll be talking about that more in the next couple of weeks. Hallelujah. So amen. It's, it's good again to be with you. Praise God. Rejoice in this hour. Be joyful. I don't care what's going on out there. It doesn't matter. Praise God. You can be joyful. You can praise God. He's with you wherever you are, anywhere that you are. Glory to God. And uh, he's wonderful. He's absolutely wonderful. So have I talked enough here? I probably have. <laughs> but uh, be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. The Lord loves you. I love you. We love you. Get in contact with us. We love to hear from you. Praise God. Even pastors need to hear from their congregation members every once in a while. Amen. So pick up the phone. Praise God and talk to us. Hallelujah. And I believe we'll be out of this very soon. Declare with us, church. Declare with us. Amen. This is over and we are out in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.